Welcome back. Another one of my favorite topics on how to learn, act, sell like an eight figure entrepreneur is how to follow up without being annoying. So many people tell me they don't follow up because they feel like they're literally being annoying. And in this video, I'm sharing with you why you must follow up as part of your business. How do you do that? Well, you can do it without feeling awkward, without feeling pushy, and without being annoying. And I'll teach you how. By the end of this video, you will know exactly how to do and create a non-sleazy follow-up system that will help you create stronger connections with the result in increased sales or revenue, whichever word you like best. Why even follow up, you're probably wondering. Well, guess what? The fortune is in the follow-up. Did you actually know that 80% of sales require more than one follow-up? It's true. It's easy. It's cheap. It doesn't cost any additional money. It just requires consistency. Consistency is like in the fortune of the follow-up. And guess what too? Better relationships and connections over time happen from this. I am going to give you an example though, okay? So about a year ago, my business partner, Denise, we work with accountants. Well, I work with entrepreneurs like you too, but specifically accountants, she said, Michelle, I know Ron over at Profit First. Profit First helps you keep more profits in your pocket. You can go check them out anytime. I said, okay, let's contact them. So we followed up once, didn't really hear anything. We followed up again. We followed up again, we followed up again, and we were doing it in a professional manner where he said, Michelle, thank you so much for following up because I was really busy and it just got bombarded in my email. And I said, hey, no problem. From that, he invited us to do a webinar. Denise and I showed up and did a webinar. Guess what? From that webinar, we filled up a whole class for our accountant sales class, and it was amazing. Literally, the fortune is in the follow-up. So you might be wondering, well, Michelle, how do you follow up? Okay, here's how it goes. Schedule the follow-up before you get off the phone or out of a meeting if you can. So in the case like with Ron, I schedule the follow-up calls every single time after we hung up the phone. However, I first need to get him on the phone. In the first beginning stages, you might need to send one email, two emails, three emails, four emails, but come from a place that if you don't send an email, you're just never gonna know. And that if you consistently send an email, then guess what? They're gonna eventually read it. And if they don't read it, then you never know anyway. And I'll give you another example because I did pitch on Shark Tank season four. And what I did for following up with producers is I found them on Twitter. I found them on LinkedIn. I sent an email through the Shark Tank website. And I think I did one other thing, but I can't remember it right now. So I hit them up from different angles. That's another great way to follow up. So think about email. If you can find their phone number, great. If you can find their Twitter account, even better. Maybe Instagram. You can send DMs on Instagram and people literally respond. I respond to people, especially if you send me a video. Oh, that's a little bonus tip, by the way. If you send a video message on Instagram, it's bound to get open and they will see it, I promise you. So again, if you're in a meeting with someone or on the phone, make sure you do not leave that meeting without having a follow-up set for the next meeting. Following up does work. And I think the part of thinking you're annoying, it's just an internal dialogue that your committee's talking to you about. You know the little voices in your head? I like to call that your committee. And sometimes it's the committee can be really good. And in other times, we need to ignore the committee. So in those times when the committee starts to tell you, well, you've already called them once or twice, and now you've sent them an email, and you just did that two weeks ago, two weeks is a long time. I promise you, I have been thanked from people. Michelle, thank you so much for following up. I would never be working with you if it wasn't for you following up with me. Again, I have 20 different stories on this. All I ask you to do and invite you is the opportunity to try this out. All right, tip number two. Send a thank you note immediately and a reminder one day before your meeting or follow up. So let's say you've had a good conversation. You really want to work with this person. They're an investor. They're a client. Something along those lines. 
send a handwritten note. For every single person that I have on my podcast, Success Unfiltered, after the interview, I send a thank you note. My follow-up to them is one month before their episode airs, I send them an email. The day of, I also send them another email. So let's say you have a very important meeting like the one I was sharing with Ron. Send a reminder the day before to make sure he shows up because sometimes when you have follow-ups from now until three months from now, they forget. I use iCal, maybe use Google Calendar, and sometimes the invites just disappear. So I always like to follow up the night before and I do it also with all of my podcast interviews. Another really cool tip is sending an off-topic email or something personal in the meantime. You might be wondering, Michelle, what do you mean by that? An off-topic email goes something like this. I'm making it up because I don't think Ron told me anything, but I'm going to share with you anyway. Ron loves to golf, right? An off-topic email could be, if I met with Ron today, let's say today's January 1st, and my follow-up is March 1st, In the middle, around February 15th, I would send an email. I'd put a reminder in my calendar with an alert and say, hey, send Ron Ron an email about golf. Maybe there's the new golf course opening. Maybe Tiger Woods is playing somewhere really cool. Just send him something interesting about something that they shared with you that was personal yet interesting at the same time. So with Ron, I could send him an article about golf. I could send him about how Tiger Woods just won uh, the next Open. He hadn't won in years. Like, hey, Ron, I'm just thinking about you. I saw this article. Check it out. Guess what that creates? It creates connection. It creates relationship. It creates, wow, that's random. That's really interesting. I've never gotten one of those before. It works like gold. And build regular follow-up into your schedule. With Mary, my example of a client that I worked with, Mary had to, she ended up increasing her revenue with me in an eight-week period by $50,000, okay? What Mary did was she had to set aside two hours per week just for follow-up with current clients. If you can't commit two hours, can you commit 30 minutes? Whatever it is, you want to be consistent. Consistency equals the fortune, which is in the follow-up. But you can't follow up if you're not consistent. So being really consistent is crucial to this whole thing. And I am like the queen, I am the pitch queen, but I'm also the consistency queen. And I think people really value consistency. I would say most people today are so distracted, right? You've got Instagram, LinkedIn, this, that, kids, yoga, workout, gym, blah, grocery store. Like it is so hard to stay consistent these days. But consistency is, I mean, literally, if you can only do 15 minutes a week, you're going to be way ahead than most people. Following up is about deepening relationships, building rapport and trust. And trust is what makes the sale happen at the right time. And I've also helped, I think, five people from the Profit First community grow their businesses and increase revenue. Some did 10,000 in revenue. Mary did 50. Christine, I think, did 30 or 40,000 in just an eight-week period. But what I did was follow up. What I did was stay top of mind. I I never let the committee go, man, I don't know if I should follow up with him today. You know, he might be really busy. He might think I'm really annoying. If you do it consistent and you do it in a professional way and you follow these few steps that I showed you here today, it will be so easy. So I want to hear from you. What do you do right now for follow up? Put in the comments below. I'd love to know. And if you like what I'm sharing, let's see a thumbs up. Okay. so if you want to create a follow up system that gets you more money in your pockets, leaving less money on the table, and gets you more clients on your roster, do not miss out on growing your top line revenue. I've got a perfect guide so you can get the seven steps to perfect your follow-up system, okay? So you can get that over at thepitchqueen.com forward slash follow-up. Once again, it's my seven step system so you can put something consistent into place because consistency is queen and king. 
So if you want to create a follow-up plan that leaves less money on this table and more money in your pockets and get more clients on your roster, you can get my seven-step guide to perfecting your follow-up over at thepitchqueen.com forward slash follow-up. And make sure to also put in the comments, what do you do right now for follow-up? I want to know what your biggest takeaway was from today's video in the comments below. And thank you so much for joining me here on the Pitch Queen YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. See you next time.